Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and before you know it, the holidays will be here and we'll be meeting up with all sorts of family members, which might be a little challenging for some. So how do we best respect, especially the elderly and the ill? I'm going to talk to Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly all about it. Good morning, Debbie and Adam. Good morning, Keith. Thank you so much for having us on The Next Right Thing. And Dave Asher has talked about um, being in Thanksgiving, and we're talking about actually sitting at the Thanksgiving dinner, (laughs) Adam. And we're talking about the folks that are around the table and how do we honor them? How do we respect them? How do we treat them? We're talking about the Catholic Church respecting life from the womb to the tomb. That includes all life. That includes um, the elderly, the seniors, those that are um, disabled, those that have challenges. And these can be our family and friends. And they will be at that Thanksgiving dinner, hopefully, if everybody gathers together. And it's usually interesting, Adam. We get a lot of calls after Thanksgiving, right before Christmas, um, on our life coaching ministry that they'll say, folks will say, you know, I was with uh, family for several hours and I just can't take it anymore. So let's start there. Mm. Yeah, so... You know, in psychology, it's it's kind of a, a truism that everybody knows that the holidays are kind of the hardest time of the year for people that are challenged with mental illness. And, and sometimes their struggles with depression and mental illness, you know, arise directly from their families, um, you know, and, and the situations they grew up with. It's the time for, you know, the most distress, it's the time for the most loneliness for many people that are estranged. It's also the time of, you know, usually the most uh, suicidal thoughts and, you know, depression. So it's a super challenging time, but God gives us something that really, I think, offers an opportunity for healing of all those challenges, and, and that is the fourth commandment. And, you know, we look at the fourth commandment, honor thy father and thy mother, and it, that sounds simple. But what that's talking about is is loving them, respecting them, being obedient, you know. And, and of course, we're, we're, when we say obedient, you know, we're not talking about being obedient to maybe if it's a really disordered thing or somebody is very mean and crossing boundaries. But basically within normal relations to be obedient there's also a burden on them to care for the spiritual and temporal welfare of their children, to pray for their children, to raise them well. This also extends to civil and religious superiors. So this commandment, you know, touches on a number of ways that God wants order in the human experience, in the human community, in the, in the mystical body of the church. God wants order, and order comes through It's interesting. It's not just respect and obedience. Love is the first thing that's listed. What is it forbidding? It's it's forbidding the hatred of parents and superiors, disrespect and disobedience. Okay. And we need to remember this is considered a mortal sin. It's one of the Ten Commandments. It's like there's there's wow. God is saying, you know, even though it's challenging, you must honor the father and mother that I've given you. In God's providence, these are the people that brought you into the world with all their challenges, with all their limitations. They're they're people just like you are. They're not perfect. You know, when we're little kids, we think they are. And and then often we have that tension of realizing later that they're also humans just like us. But to move a little bit deeper into that, we can come to a point where we have empathy for the fact that they also are limited and tried their best and they had their own burdens from their childhood. And I think the big challenge, Deb, is this commandment is asking us to encounter our family, particularly our parents, but our family in general, more than just let's fall back into the childhood resentments and patterns. Let's just unconsciously fall back into the drama and, you know, the misgivings and the things that we don't like and the impatience and all of that. God is challenging us to start anew with this encounter. The forgiveness and the love, love is expressed through forgiveness, I think is 
one of the most healing things I've seen in, in psychological work and, and life coaching work. Mm -hmm. Taking the challenge to forgive and allow the person to be a person and maybe talk through things, be kind, be patient, and allow them to, to be themselves. What do you think? Absolutely. And to, to be Christ to them and to allow them to uh, grow because everybody's changing. Everybody learns things. Um, you know, if you're capable of learning things, then, then, you're, then you are changing. Each time you learn something, it, it, it shapes you in, in a different way. And we, we need to you know, remember that we're talking and we're interacting with souls. This is so very important. And if we, if we are going to stand in front of, of, of Jesus um, after we take our last breath and, and we now meet Jesus, are we going to, what are we, we're going to be accountable for that. How many souls, you know, did we bring ourselves to God and how many souls did we, did we point towards God? Just like the Blessed Mother points us to her son, we are to point to people to God. And, and it's very, it's very important. We do that in every single interaction, especially when, when we have these family celebrations where everybody's thrown together for the first, sometimes it's the first time in a whole year and they're put together for several hours and then, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Some, some gatherings go well, some don't because they, they really didn't set the boundaries correct on how to, how to engage for that whole entire day or the whole entire weekend. And it's, it's really, it can be really difficult for people. And that's, that's not a, you know, it's odd to me, Adam, we get together for this beautiful remembrance of, of Thanksgiving, right? And we're, get, we're gathering together for a beautiful meal. Uh, we should be at thanking God, praising God. And yet there's, you know, fights that break out, arguments. People end up leaving Thanksgiving weekend and not talking to each other until Christmas or sometimes afterwards. It, it's it's really unfortunate. And every time we do stuff like that, we're, we are wounding the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah. It, and that body of Christ is built on relationships, right? Mm -hmm. Relationships within the church, relationships within your family. God wants us to cooperate with each other. He wants us to pray for each other. He wants to move through the relationships that he's given us. You said something really powerful a minute ago. You said, allow the people to grow and change. That's so key, I think especially if you had challenges in your childhood or your young adulthood um, that it's so easy to hold on to and you kind of imagine the person is exactly the same as the worst moment you can remember That's and right. it's kind it's kind of human nature right we tend to be critical by nature you know you can do 99 things right you make one mistake and that's the thing you know we all focus on <clears throat> and so to allow the person to have grown and to change and encounter them the way they are right now, instead of projecting onto them the worst moment of your childhood or your previous encounters and just assume it's going to go bad and in a sense make it go bad. It becomes like a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you're primed for that, if that's what you're expecting, you almost create it yourself. Exactly. So. It's, it's, it's a real challenge. And I think, I think Jesus touched on it. You know, when he talked about, he went to his hometown and everybody said, Oh, this is the carpenter's son. Why would we listen to him? Don't we know his father? Don't we know his, his siblings? You know, he's just a person. We, we know his foibles and, and, you know, we grew up with him and basically he had to leave. They weren't receptive because they wanted to encounter Jesus only as the child or young man that they knew growing up and not encounter him as he was, which is his public ministry had started. And it was time to reveal that. And they were closed off from what the greatest gift they could have possibly received to be with and learn from Jesus in the flesh. And because they couldn't allow him from their perspective to grow and change, of course he was growing and changing. He was growing in his humanity and his understanding. But they wouldn't allow the fact that there's a new aspect of his life that's emerged now, and I'm going to encounter that. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and one way people may say, well, okay, that sounds really good. You know, how do, how do I do that? How do I apply that 
um, for the Thanksgiving meal. One, one of the ways that we suggest in life coaching is ask questions. You know, you're sitting with these, these friends and family members around your dining room table and, and ask them, you know, what have you learned this year? What, 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 uh, ha- what one thing impacted you this year? You know, we're, we're getting ready to close 2024. So it's an awesome time to ask questions. When you ask questions, you learn something new about that other person. Just, I, I like what Adam said about this idea of, of, you know, when he said, you're just assuming, you know, what they're like, we don't know what people are like. People have changed in a year. You know, we know that through COVID Remember, COVID changed a lot of people in a year. And it's so important that we ask questions, you know, um, what have you learned this year? You know, talk about God. That's so important to bring, bring people with God at the center. And I've, we've said this many times in life coaching, you only know a person as much as they know God. So go, you know, have that God talk somehow at the table and, and people will, will engage. And then, and then really, you know, ask those questions about how is their life going, you know, and, and be, be, um, interested in that. That usually allows people to expand their thoughts about others. What do you say, Adam? Yeah. And the final thing in the moments we have left in this segment, um, another powerful thing, if the other person is struggling with what we're talking about, if they are starting the old script from childhood, from previous family problems, and they seem lost in the past in that encounter. One thing that can be really powerful is to gently, peacefully reflect back to them what they're doing and what you're experiencing. So to encourage them to move beyond the past Mm -hmm. and encounter you in this moment, and to even say that explicitly. You know, I I really want to spend this holiday being together now, I don't want to live in the past. You know, I want you to encounter me as I am now in my life. I want to share that with you, and I want you to share the real you with me. I love that. Okay, we're going to hold it there. We'll send it back to Keith, and then for the final segment, we'll give some more practical tips and tools to really make your Thanksgiving celebration special. All righty. Thank you so much, Debbie and Adam. I always love when we do kind of life coaching sessions here on on The Next Right Thing because we all learn something new, especially maybe a refresher. Like uh, this was a great reminder for Adam to mention to honor our parents and grandparents because if we don't, it's mortal sin. It's one of the Ten Commandments. So if uh, that was a refresher for you, that that I'm sure that was very helpful. But uh, one other saint uh, quote that I want to bring up is from St. Gianna. The secret of happiness is to live moment by moment and to thank God for what he is sending us every day in his goodness. And it could be being part of the family celebration of Thanksgiving, even those that we might have a lot of disagreements with, gives us the opportunity, like Debbie and Adam to say, to really get to know them a little bit better and not just talk politics. But coming up next, we are continuing this conversation and giving us some practical tips. Debbie and Adam will be joining us once again right here after this break. On Morning Joy, where truth matters. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters. Welcome back to Morning Joy, where truth matters. I'm your host, Keith Downey, and we are continuing the final segment here of The Next Right Thing with Debbie Giorgiani and Adam Bly. And of course, getting some practical tips on uh, really how to say Stay sane this holiday, uh, this ho- these, these couple, next couple, couple holidays here. But without further ado, Debbie and Adam, take it away. Thanks, Keith. And to make it enjoyable, you really wanted to make it a great experience for folks when we, when we you know, there's a lot of preparation that goes um, behind um, making sure a Thanksgiving, actually, it almost turns into a whole weekend. You know, you have the, the Thursday meal and then you go into Friday, Saturday, Sunday, because most a lot of people are traveling and they come in for the holidays. And you want it to be a wonderful experience where you're filled with a lot of memories, a lot of pictures, things that, you know, you can really take take with you into the future. But Adam, one of the one of the major um, tips and and life skills that I'd like to impart this morning, if I may, and I'd love to hear your responses on this, is this idea of really honoring our seniors. Um, My parents have gone to meet the Lord, and I can't even 
begin to tell you how many times my siblings and I, we were, were in conversation and we'll say something like, you know, what happened with this aunt or, or this uncle? And we're like, wow, we wish we had mom and dad we could ask. And, you know, mom and dad are gone. You know, they're, they're no longer here. Our seniors and our elderly, they are filled with wisdom. They've lived a long life. They've seen a lot of things. And it is so important we tap into that wisdom because I think this world is lacking that. And I just would love for, for folks, when when you see your parents and grandparents walk into that door um, forth at the Thanksgiving meal, turn and look at them with an with a like, wow, like here comes mom and dad, here comes grandma and grandpa, and I'm, I'm going to get to tap into all that wisdom today. And, and that is, if we look at our seniors that way and appreciate them for the wealth of wisdom that they carry with them for the years that they've lived and all the things they've gone through, it is such a beautiful um, way to honor thy father and mother like God commands, but it's a way to to really hand down some beautiful um, nuggets of, of truth in the family that, that can be passed on. And people feel like there's, uh, they they are valued at that Thanksgiving meal. Oftentimes, Adam, we hear this, as you know, in life coaching, we hear this all the time, that parents and grandparents are pushed to the side and have to just sit and observe. They're, they should just be grateful they they were even invited sometimes to the meal. And that's unfortunate because there's a wealth of wisdom waiting for people to tap into. Yeah, you know, what you're saying makes me think of my grandmother, Isabel, and, um, you know, she has passed many years now, but she did something for me when I was a child. We would have kind of conversations, and, and she would, she was a very interesting person. She was an artist, very thoughtful, very bright, and she would verbally tell me some things that she had, you know, learned in life and, and learned through her experience, but as I was kind of moving towards my teens, she took the time to kind of write a letter with, you know, and numbered them. Like, here's like the five or six things that I've re taken all these years to realize. Hard won kind of insights that I have about life, and I'm going to write them out for you. I still have those pieces of paper all these years later. They're faded. The ink is fading on them. But it was such a powerful thing that she took the time to write those things down, knowing that a child may not remember all of that mm -hmm. years later when you really need it, and it might be useful as you're becoming an adult. That was a powerful thing. And it touches on something that, that we do in psychology and life coaching sometimes, moving in the other direction, and that is to write a letter to the person not even necessarily sending it to them or giving it to them, but it's a powerful thing to write a letter to somebody where you take the old baggage and the old reactions and the old thoughts and you make them conscious, you put them on paper physically in front of you, you see them with your eyes, you process them in a new way. And it's kind of like therapy in general. By right. saying things out loud, you take away their power to dominate you. So we're all driven unconsciously by the baggage of the past to some extent or other. And a big part of what therapy does is by saying it out loud with another person, I become aware, oh, that's what I'm doing. It's just like what my dad did in his relationships. I must have seen him doing that, but I didn't realize I was unconsciously doing this. And now it doesn't have power over me. Now I can choose whether I go down that road in my relationships. In a similar way, by writing a letter to somebody, maybe before the holidays, it takes the old baggage and makes it conscious and allows you to then make a choice whether the old scripts are going to dominate my encounter with family this year or not, mm -hmm. and gives you the freedom to maybe encounter the person today as they are now. Right. And that, and that's so important to stay in the moment. You know, I agree with you so very much when you said on the, in the previous segment about how we will reflect back to a, a moment that really has stayed with us and has hurt us. And, and that's where we, 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 um, you know, register it in our brain. And then we, we have our defenses up right there. It's like, it's like that's happening all over again. And, and you were talking about 
almost making it happen because you're just repeating that. But if we stay in the moment, if we really go into these celebrations, these family celebrations in the right prayerful tone and to um, realize that at any moment, God could call us home. I mean, right after this segment today, let's face it, right after this segment, we could be called home today. And, and, the, and that's it. I mean, this is our last opportunity to engage on this side of the veil in this capacity. And so it's, it's really quite interesting when you start to look at it like that, you appreciate each moment, you appreciate each person in front of you, you start to realize they are body and soul composite. And so we have to focus on the soul, which is, which is uh, eternal. It's so, so important that we, that we definitely have a soul to soul encounter, not just encountering a person's bad actions or their bad behavior and things like that. So it, when we stay in that moment, we can learn and, and really it becomes a, a, a moment of glory. I've noticed it many times when people will stay in the moment, you will see bright, shining things come out of it. What do you say to that? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, it's a hard thing to do. It's a scary thing to do, to be in the moment instead of just play a script from the past which is easy to do because you you understand it even if it was dysfunctional it's what you know and so you tend to repeat it but to be in the moment is to be vulnerable because you're usually in new territory mm -hmm. but that's where new insights and experiences and new realizations about the other person and yourself comes comes from so it's a really powerful thing it that touches on a, I, I wanted to share just two quick things in the sure. time we have left mm -hmm. One thing that can be really powerful when there's old drama that tends to repeat at the holidays or every time you spend time with the person, as hard as it is to realize your part in the drama, to try to look at yourself from the outside. Imagine if somebody was watching you and what you're doing truly objectively. How would it look? What would they see? And it's a scary thing to do. But when we do that, we often realize I'm contributing to the problem. That's right. I'm contributing to recapitulating the drama and the dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And then I can make a choice to maybe do it differently this time. That's right. I love that. Okay, so my final comments, again, just to remind everyone, we know when you have those seniors and elderly at your dinner table for Thanksgiving, remember, they're a wealth of wisdom. Tap into it. It's exciting. Be excited about it and, and let them come off of the, the observer's role and let them get into the conversation. Okay, you can tell I'm sticking up for the seniors because I'm just about there, Adam. All right, Adam, have a beautiful rest of your day. We're going to send it back to Keith for the rest of Morning Joy. Thank you so much, Debbie and Adam, and uh, I 100% agree. And obviously you want the permission, but I, I also recommend, especially if you're getting into some of these these stories that they're telling, to record uh, the, you know, all of their stories, because that way you'll always be able to listen and even share with your children some of these great stories, I'm sure. Uh, your grandparents, parents have some incredible stories to share. Maybe it's based on their, their journey in the Catholic faith that... Uh, uh, your children could benefit from. So just obviously make sure it's okay to record them. But um, that, that is a great way to make them feel uh, important and embarking on some of that wisdom. But also don't forget this Saturday, the Spirit World, 10 a.m. Central. This is, it gives you an opportunity to call in and make sure to call in early because the phone lines tend to, to blow up there. Uh, we want to get your question in, especially uh, considering... I'm going to talk about angels and demons and everything in between. So uh, keep in mind that. But uh, coming up next here, how do we integrate praying for these souls in our lives? We'll talk about that right after this break. You're listening to Morning Joy, where truth matters.